Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fifth episode of Tissues of the Day, a podcast about emotions and sexuality. I'm your host, David, and I'm joined today again by the inimitable Robert. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> um, we're going to be experimenting a little bit with a format. Uh, and today's episode theme is going to be partner types, like mm. types of people you're attracted to. So first thing, just to break the ice, just to like get us nice and comfortable and not feel as weird because <laughs> we've literally been prepping for like 45 minutes um, mm. uh, just now. So yeah, so we're just going to like prepping chill out. Prepping is important, and David, before you go it, down. Prepping is, yeah, you're right. <laughs> prepping is important because um, if you don't prep, you're going to make a mess. <laughs> <laughs> so many layers of innuendo. I was, um, do you know Davey Wavy, the YouTuber? I've heard of him. Actually, I met him. Really? Yeah, during Pride one year, doing Outlook TV. Uh, we were like doing oh, cool. our show and he was there and we did a short interview with him. Oh, for, yeah, for Out TV. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, yeah, he seems like a pretty nice dude. Uh, so his YouTube channel right now is, you know, it's almost just like sex ed for gay men kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, the like I was checking in on his channel. Um, I don't even remember why. Uh, but he had a video that was like how gay sex changes from like your 20s, 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. And like I just watched it for like a minute or two. But like. The twenty-year-old was like, "I've never douched in my life," and then the thirty-year-old, <laughs> the guy in his thirties, was like, "That is the most twenty-something answer I've ever heard." <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was actually at my friend's place recently, and he introduced me to these things called Pure Men, and they're like pills you order online. They're basically just like fiber supplements. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just to keep you clean all the time. Just pristine, yeah, totally. Twenty. It's usually um. It's usually psyllium husk. Mm -hmm. Psyllium husk is like one of the best yep. things for fiber, for, uh, you know, clean movements. Anyway, <laughs> um, so th th that probably should have, <laughs> yeah, that probably should have weeded out anyone who uh, <laughs> is not interested the in listening to a podcast about gay, <laughs> gay sexuality. <laughs> um, and yeah, and whittled it down to the people who are in for a treat. Mm. So let's do some quick questions just to keep breaking the ice. Um, it's just going to be mush and slush after this. Bring it <laughs> um, What are the questions? Uh, what's a song that's stuck in your head? It's a song that I wrote recently, actually. So I've been playing a lot of you, Ugh, as humble you know. brag. <laughs> humble brag. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. It's like been in my head because I've been playing it so much. It's not necessarily good or great or anything. I'm literally learning the uke during this pandemic. Um, but hmm. yeah, that's been stuck in my head. Okay, cool. Do you have a title for it? It's called You Broke It, You Bought It. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And it's about it's, a dildo. It is. <laughs> 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 Did you say dildo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, um, if you broke that, well, oh, you definitely bought a few days in the hospital. Uh, <laughs> you. It is. It is about kind of relationships, about like dating somebody and them just kind of screwing you over. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, how would you describe your aesthetic? My aesthetic is I am definitely like the clean cut. Um, period. Clean cut. That's kind of my, my aesthetic is like, I like to be groomed, but uh, more kind of fashion specific. It's like, um, I would say it's almost like classic, but with little edge. Like I always like a little bit of okay. like rock and roll or avant-garde. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, and I'm going to use one of the questions you suggested. Uh, pie or cake? Pie. Definitely pie. Okay. Short guys or tall guys? Short guys, I'm finding more recently. Ooh, okay. Robert likes to be taller. I do. Um, what did you do for self care today? Today, I went on a walk with my friend and bought a coffee. Um, I don't know if you have to blank out the product placement <laughs> from my <laughs> local coffee shop. That or give me some money. Yeah, yeah, please. Mm -hmm. um, it's a local place. Yeah, lo local place called Small Victory. They're wonderful, great baked goods, good coffee. Yeah. Nice. Did you and I go there uh, when I saw you a couple months ago? I think so. Was it like the place that's about a block and a half from my place? 
Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, and I was like, oh, there's like a really hot guy who's like doing like uh, admin work for them. <laughs> yes, I think yes, I stepped yes, out. yes, yes, yes. He was sitting okay, at cool. the like coffee bar, right? And you saw him from a yeah. distance. And then yeah, that yeah, song yeah, yeah. from and I was like, like I don't Streisand know what to say. On. Yeah, yeah. But Bar- <laughs> a Barbara Streisand song came yeah, out. Yeah, because the, from a distance, I'd be like, from a distance. Uh, yeah, that one. I ha- there's a gap in my uh, my Barbara culture. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't know as much about her. I've seen maybe two or three of her movies. Mm-hmm. So, uh, last <laughs> question. <laughs> um, <laughs> what would we most likely find in your saved porn folder? Most likely fine in my save porn folder. So most of it I have deleted uh, mm-hmm. because the internet is free. And I'm just, I'm always paranoid about those like getting caught moments. Like I'm going through my files or somebody else has to go through my files. So I've deleted most of it. But honestly, that which remains would be a few naughty uh, uh, images sent to me by a uh, uh, gentleman. And mm-hmm. then it would be like, old like full length porn vids like dvds that i was like l- researched looked up and then like ripped them off the internet and like stored them so they're like stuff probably from the 2000s wait did they have some kind of sentimental value or were you just like no i around? just haven't deleted them yet it's it's so weird because like there's something about most of what you get on the internet right is like quick six minute snippets of stuff and so I guess I'm like, well, this is like the equivalent of throwing out a DVD, which I have, I did during the pandemic, throw out all my old porn DVDs. Like I'm done with them all now, but uh, I just held on to a few digital files. I don't know why I need to purge them. Like get some silly and a husk in there and get rid of it all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's a blockage. <laughs> um, to open up the floodgates. <laughs> here's, okay, wait, this is not on my list but just a follow-up question to what you just said um if you break up with someone should you delete any nudes that you have of them (laughs) i feel that if you send images of your own free will to somebody and they have so many ways of which to capture that uh that's like you've relinquished your freedom of, of losing them or like of them getting deleted or whatever regardless of your relationship status However, from an ethical perspective, probably, yeah. Yeah, you know? it's like a nice thing to do. Yeah, for sure. For some, you know, something nice for somebody. And and I've had that. I've, I've gotten rid of ones. Uh, generally, I've, yeah. whenever I've recorded anything or captured anything, uh, like, especially anything sexually based, I get rid of it after the fact. Like, even during yeah. the session and that. Because, like, you know, some people find it, like, kinky and, and uh, like, it's a fun thing to do during sex, but I'm always paranoid it's going to get out, so I delete it after. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Well, it already is out, Robert. It's already on the servers. I know. We don't have control of these it's things. It's in the cloud. <laughs> it's in the cloud. We were paranoid of the things on the street. Now we're paranoid of the things above us, too. This world is just getting worse. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny that, like, we say the cloud when really it's just a fucking warehouse yeah. full of black boxes. Exactly. <laughs> it is nowhere in the sky. It's literally sitting on these black boxes in a yeah. super air-conditioned room in the middle of, like, vegas you know like yeah the deserts and that where nobody wants to build buildings yeah i think at the like at the closest you can get it might be a stretch is um when stuff is transferred via satellite occasionally you know Mm. data is like going through the clouds in that way but it always finds a home in the black box (laughs) it's dead it always does (laughs) Oh my gosh, I, I'm, I'm doing a quick adjustment here. I hope this doesn't ruin your audio. I realize my mic should be closer. There we go. Oh no, no worries. All right, so we are going to get into our theme for the day. Ooh, what is we it? We talked about dating types. Dating types, right. types of men, mm. manly men, attractive men, beautiful men. We love men here on the pod. <laughs> I just thought of like uh, Robin Hood men in tights. We're men, we're men in tights. <laughs> the best. Right. Um, so I guess I'll just jump right into it. One of my meaty questions. Mm. Who are some of your celebrity crushes, Robert? What a, what a great pairing of a meaty question to one of your favorite men. It all, it all goes hand in hand. One of my favorite celebrity or public figure crushes would be i am like a classic victim of just a tall dark and handsome henry cavill Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. He also like plays Superman, which is like kind of a nerdy gay fantasy thing for me too. Um, my thing was always more Batman, but like the idea of Batman and Superman, ugh, like yeah, floodgates open. Yeah. yeah, 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 which we have touched on in a previous episode. I can't remember which number, but I'll put a link in the description because we talk about it's probably in the comics episode like the media episode because you talk about x-men and like your Mm -hmm. you know love of those comics but then also Mm -hmm. the um yeah just seeing henry cavill in those adaptations like he's so beautiful but then you found out i think you told me this off mic you know just as friends but like he um god people know now david they know yeah 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 uh oh, <laughs> you no. You said like Henry Cavill just in his day to day life is uh you know, uh, like into nerd culture and like oh, yeah. has a ton of geeky hobbies, which is definitely pretty pretty cool. Yeah, follow that man on his Instagram, and he just, I mean, there's a lot of like, oh, here's me on film, sure, like any actor would do, but he has this like, mm-hmm. here's me at home building my own like custom PC rig for gaming, and as like a nerd, yeah. <laughs> I like my knees give out and I start you know ovulating. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, I'm just gonna name a whole bunch of names. If anybody stands out or like you agree, mm. uh, let me know. But. Yeah, here are some of mine. We have Michael B. Jordan, Troy Savan, Harry Styles, Sean Ford, Matt Bernstein or Bernstein, Timothy Chalamet, Joel Kim Booster, Violet Chachki, and Fum Vipurit. Oh my gosh, you have such a type. You have such a type. Do I? You do. <laughs> yeah, there's some consistency across those. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, no, you totally do. Yeah, but that's I a like future question. Boys. We're going through these people first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you had uh some others. Mm-hmm. Who else was on there? Chris Evans, again, just kind of like it's similar to Henry Cavill, just for you know, like obviously I have a type myself that I really like, mm. but there is also Charlie Barnett who doesn't fall into those gentlemen. Yeah, wait, I need to look look, look up him up. Is. He's beautiful. He is uh I first saw him in a series on Netflix. That was basically a remake yes! of San Francisco, like like this queer people in a yeah, house. Yeah, Tales of the City. Tales yeah, of the City. yeah, yeah, yeah. I do know this. Yeah, and he's really good in it. He is queer himself. He is gorgeous. He seems like kind of a big nerd and has just a big personality. And he just seems really fun. I think he has a boyfriend or something. So that was a big old downer moment for me. But nothing mm-hmm. Hog and Dawes can't fix, you know? So. Yeah. I mean... Really? Nothing Hog and Dawes can't fix. Yeah, no, he's great in Tales of the City. If anyone hasn't seen yeah. it's on uh it's on Netflix. Um yeah. it's really interesting. It tells a lot of like I don't want to say like creative because they're not like outlandish, but yeah, a bunch of like creative and interesting queer stories that we don't get to see very much. Yeah, and just a lot of facets of it. We're talking like yeah. gay male, gay female, trans, you know, bisexual, dealing yeah, yeah, yeah. with like HIV, just nice big old mix like age issues generational issues it was, mm-hmm. it was great and and charlie for me charlie i don't know if he's um mixed race but i have very much a thing for like you know like we were going to talk about this a bit more later but like i have such a thing for people who are mixed race so that's a thing for me too yeah cool uh oh, did the temperature just go up in the room? Because uh, <laughs> I'm mixed race. If anybody can't see, or if they're just listening <laughs> to the just audio, like, just in case you did it. No. <laughs> if I don't sound mixed raced enough to yeah. the people on audio, yeah. um, cool. Okay, so this kind of leads into the next question. So, what personality type um, do you find is like the commonality between mm-hmm. all of these um, for you? And then I'll say for myself. So Chris Evans, I don't know so much about. Definitely Henry, though, and Charlie are both big nerds. Uh, so mm-hmm. I love a nerdy person. And to me, nerdy isn't so much. I think maybe some people kind of equate nerdy to like a look per se. But to me, nerdy is mm-hmm. more just about being like very passionate about something. And yeah. often that subject matter is non-mainstream you know a little off mainstream it's like the off broadway which i also love people who are into like musicals um Mm. because Mm -hmm. again it's like passion about a particular subject matter that not everybody is into and so if any of that aligns into like fantasy sci-fi anime um yeah broadway musical theater that sort of stuff like it is just it's it's what i'm really into so i find that i really enjoy that a personality type um 
And then also, like, man, give me a guy who can make me laugh, David. Like, yeah. I, I need person who can make me laugh. Yep. Yep. Mm. I get that. Um, yeah, to add on, I mean, I have listened a little bit to Chris Evans' interviews and stuff, and he definitely has a bit of that, like, nerdy, like, kind of intellectual mm-hmm. vibe about him. Because mm-hmm. um, he really... Uh, yeah, he's like super well spoken. He definitely takes acting very seriously. Um, but I remember listening to this was a while back, but like uh he was just talking about how much like respect he has for women, and I was just like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh There was just something <laughs> I'm all a Twitter. There was, yeah, there was just something about how so he used to date, I don't know if they're still together, um, Jenny Slate. If you know who mm-hmm. that is. Yeah. Jenny Slate, um, comedian. Uh, yeah. She was on Big Mouth, but left. Yeah. 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 Which is a whole other yeah. thing. But um, yeah, she has a great Netflix special uh, that came out in 2018 or 19 um, that I highly recommend. But in this podcast that he was on with her, he was just talking about how he was like, yeah, I don't know why some guys get uncomfortable whenever women are like really funny, but like I love it. I was like, mm-hmm. thank God, because right. how many times have I been in like a conversation with a straight man who has to one up like everything, oh. um, let alone like whenever a, a woman is chiming in or a woman is being like entertaining or interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, and I don't care, like gender, non-binary, just so long as you human are funny is like that such a turn on because I see it as. You know, we all are going to have bad moments. So if you can bring me out of that, you know, and you can add joy to the world because there's enough bad in it, like, wonderful. And then the yeah. nerdy quality is like, you know, that makes me feel like you have something you can talk about. And if you can, like, if you're a good storyteller, oh, that's another thing. Like, if you can, like, like Ooh. enthrall me in a good story, then I'm just like, mm, take me now. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I, I just, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Um, but I also like somebody who can have authority and can like drive something like I'm quite a type myself. And so to have somebody who can like allow me to relinquish that and just be like not the decision maker or not the, you know, organizer or just like, like I like to feel submissive in a way in certain relationships. Like it, it like not all the time, but there's an element of that that I want because I have so much of that during the day totally yeah 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 because that was something i wanted to bring to this conversation was so i'm reading a great book right now Mm -hmm. um it is called it's a doozy adult children of emotionally immature parents (gasps) my friend told me about this book it's unbelievable like i read the sample on google and i was like crying within like 30 seconds (laughs) i was like oh my god it (laughs) Um, hit a chord or is that yeah, just one of 100%. your parents who hit you? <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> Maybe not literally. Dark. But <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a very interesting book because like, you know, whatever. If they hear this, uh, that's fine. We can talk about it. But like we um, it's basically helped me build a lot of empathy because you and I have had pretty long conversations about how like I've been living with family and like. You know, I've had to relearn where my parents are at and just be like, oh, okay, all right, wait, okay. They won't say what their boundaries are, but clearly this is a boundary. Mm. Um, And then uh, part of that, what that book also talks about is how we will recreate our childhood circumstances in intimate relationships, like in the future, if we don't heal our inner child, basically. Ah, so you're just going to carry it forward with you until it comes up in some nasty way later in life. Yeah. So how this ties into like personality types. This is less about my celebrity crushes. <laughs> this is a little less fun, but like this is just more about like when I reflect on my past is like personality types that I've ended up committing to are more on the emotionally immature side. And it was maybe in my last relationship where I, I like found myself maturing a lot, but um, we were like growing apart. We were growing apart through that process. Exactly so what happened to me. Yeah, so it just became like, it just became a thing. So now, whenever I hear, um, uh, yeah, a guy who like seems very like emotionally intelligent and like, you know, has boundaries, like understands what his needs are, is able to like meet them or ask for them or whatever, like, 
that's huge. Like that's practically everything to me. Like that's like priority number one. Like if someone like, you know, I'm sure uh, this might like bug some people, but it is pretty much non-negotiable for me for the next person that I date seriously to Mm -hmm. have been in some form of therapy like for a year or so or like just this is like a requirement of somebody you date yeah i think so because oh wow yeah show me the receipts let me see those those counseling (laughs) sessions i want to know how fucked up you (laughs) are exactly because like even if (sighs) i've just like talked to people who are like oh you know i've thought about it or like oh i just don't know like what i would bring up in it kind of thing it Mm. just i don't know i just I think that's just where I'm at right now. I'm like, there's always possibility that there's someone who like is just, they were just like raised right and they like don't need therapy and they like are super with it. Wrong. (laughs) There's no way. There's no one person on this planet who doesn't have some screwed up chapter in their life that they need to like process. Yeah, I think so. And really like the point, the point of that for me is I, uh, I am an internalizer and I will often bend over backwards trying to like, <laughs> change myself. Yeah. Uh, trying to change myself like for the sake of the other person so that they feel better in the relationship mm. rather than tell them this is inexcusable. Like, you know, something needs to change. Yeah. Um, and that's another huge thing this book talks about of just like, yeah, just like, so I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm getting very real here, but that's like cool. at the end of the day, like, you know, physical attraction and like attraction to personalities is like a great starting point. But like eventually we get into, you know, who do you take seriously? Like what actually lights you up and feels like something that would make uh, for a good life? Yeah. And I think there's two major factors in that one being that um, I think I think this just goes to show that overall personality dominates. You could be Mm -hmm. as physically attractive as you can be, but if you don't have a personality, if you can't hold for the long term, you're not going to get into a long term relationship, right? It's all going to be short term. Uh, And then the second thing is, is that I think it goes to show that it's like by having somebody who you who is interested in counseling or who has gone through counseling and what is I think that was probably indicative to you, if I can infer a little bit about what you're saying, is that you're basically saying that they're open to change and challenging who they are and growing from that. You know, which which is huge because it's true. There are people who are like, "Uh, it's not for me. It doesn't really work. You know, like, I don't think I need it and that. But you know what? Unless you have an amazing, like, self-awareness and emotional IQ, you know, like EQ, um, or you are, like, have an amazing support network or something at your disposal, yeah, like, counseling is needed in some way. Like, we cannot do it all entirely on our own, you know? Like, you yeah. you have support networks for a reason. We're social creatures for a reason. And I think that, yeah, I think that, like, everybody needs to go through it in some way because they're, they're... One thing that a counselor can offer you that no one can offer you is an unbiased party. And somebody who is licensed and trained in sort of, like, how to approach those subjects and how to, like, you know analyze them and dig at them um friends are great colleagues are great family's great to kind of go to and you want to have a diversity of people that you talk to but none of them will be unbiased like a counselor yeah 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 yeah. and i think really the last thing i would say about it is it's also a good caution for me like i don't want to be the only person that someone is opening up to that's a lot of pressure and it's also like I don't have the skill set to be someone's therapist like I have needs in a relationship as well yeah. um so I just don't want to be like you know the sole support system and yeah, yeah. yeah no, so when somebody it's like such a green flag so to speak when someone is like oh yeah no like I've been talking to my therapist about such and such or like yeah I've been seeing one for the past little bit or like I'm on a break right now but I'll probably go back or whatever fucking Mm -hmm. just therapy just like like it's because it also speaks to it also speaks to like self-honesty i think and that's something that's really really important to me like for someone to have integrity and like be upfront and like have some self-knowledge because if someone 
doesn't have <laughs> self knowledge. Like it's just fucking guessing games, and they're just like, I I don't like games. I don't like those kinds of games. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So on the more on the side of like <laughs> my celebrity crushes, if we can bring it more to like what is the um like what is the personality type? I mean, I touched on it before. It's just like if I look at these names, I get the sense that like I said before, I like I like pretty boys and I like mm -hmm. I like sensitive boys. Yeah. I'm getting I'm getting pretty boy sensitive <laughs> kind of on the slim side, you know, like yeah. more like yeah, uh, the guy who had mentioned from Call Me By Your Name, like he, I think, personifies Yeah, it. Chalamet. Chalamet, like a Chalamet, like that's very much your type. Whereas I'm a little more on the like, so like, okay, let's go into the other part of this question. Fuck the personality. Yeah. Let's get shallow. I want you to feel the sand at the bottom yeah. of this ocean. Uh, oh, yeah. When it gets to the physical characteristics, <laughs> you're a Chalamet type. And I am obviously more like... Well, it's so funny. I find I'm really torn. I'm either, and I shouldn't say torn like it's a negative thing, but I'm either more like <laughs> Evans, like tall, dark, handsome, rugged, or it's more something, somebody who's sort of like, I wouldn't say quite the Chalamet, but that's where I like, I like mixed race people because what they often bring is they have like the masculine characteristics, characteristics, um, blended with the feminine characteristics that might come from like two different backgrounds and ethnicities which i just find really interesting mm. and often mm. those blends often end up having the other characters that i like physically which are like dark hair dark uh features dark skin um i like you know i love you know a set of blue eyes or green eyes or something like that um i think it's pretty classically like it's a bit of the other side of the fence like what i'm not and that you know like you know somebody that's just a little different from me so i either like yeah a really classically rugged guy or you know something kind of mixed on the other end of the spectrum yeah 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 i get that yeah for me you know i just like uh i just like big dicks i like a nice <laughs> hole i like a <laughs> big bubble butt um you know if they My have a pretty stars. mouth uh, <laughs> <laughs> where's my petticoat and my little <laughs> tissue to dab my eye um yeah yeah i definitely like the um the like bishonen type <laughs> just like i just like a beautiful boy um mm. you know and the like i'm just looking at these as well because it's like there's definitely like a femininity aspect to it kind of like mm -hmm. what you were saying where mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know definitely in the past i've been uh, you know, just like working out a bit of internalized homophobia and like being more afraid of like my feminine, fe <laughs> my feminine, feminine side. Wick -a -wick -a -wick. <laughs> yeah, my feminine and feminine and feminine and um, <laughs> um, yeah. Whereas now, I don't know. I'm just very much like just tired of that because <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah, for what? For it just yeah. it doesn't matter. Um, and anyone like who's really hung up on that. Uh, just has some stuff that they got to work out. Well, and that's the thing. I think that's what's connected. Is I found that especially as I have aged and like a fine wine, um, I've found that I do like that blend. So like classically, if I took like the example, like Chris Evans, that the more rugged, ha handsome in that, I wouldn't like a guy like that as much if their personality didn't have feminine qualities. Like, I want a blend of feminine and masculine. Like, if you're, like, very masculine kind of uh, in terms of physical characteristics, I want some more femininity in you. I actually find that really sexy that somebody can straddle the line of one side or the other. Like, um, And I think that comes partly from being, like, a performer myself and being theater and just being in touch with that. But also because I think that means that you are willing to open up and be vulnerable, be weak, um, be... Um, yeah feminine or receptive. masculine yeah, a receptive <laughs> person or a giving person um i yeah no uh, i'm a full-on verse so like i i want Same. i want that like flexibility and um not not ambiguity that's not the word but just yeah kind of that but that's a good word spectrum. that is a very good word <laughs> which uh ambiguity i i do think ambiguity can be like quite nice mm -hmm. especially in like art and in like opinions and stuff but yeah carry yeah on. and well and that's why i think somebody like so like charlie barnett or somebody who is those 
uh, like when I see somebody who is mixed race and that they represent those feminine and masculine co qualities coming together in a beautiful way. Uh, so I want that also in somebody who it's just like part of their personality. So if you're extremely masculine, then I want some femininity in there to kind of counterbalance it because I find those people more interesting, more um, human. And yeah, just more like real dimensional. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't give me no Lego. Wait, don't Lego's give me no three dimensional. Uh, don't, don't give no. Don't give me no. Don't give me no light bright boy. I wanna, I wanna fucking MoMA sculpture of a man. <laughs> <laughs> don't give me no light bright. I don't want your tiny little lights. I want the full meal deal. Exactly. Um, if you could give your younger self any advice about men, what would you say? Oh fuck. This is a tough one. Um, yeah. I think it would be first and foremost is explore more try more mm. things um be less afraid of who you are and mm. you know like that because i think it translates into who you ultimately are willing to date and who you are willing to um be open to <laughs> from the back or the front um the uh you know it's just to me it's about that exploration not only of others and in, within yourself which i think comes to sort of becoming accepting of your feminine your masculine side of your sexuality of your diverse sexual interests if you explore that within yourself you'll then find a better match in terms of the person who like plugs in with that lego piece going back to our lego metaphor <laughs> so yeah what about yeah. you what would you say to yourself I would say to maybe just like wait just a little bit longer before settling down with someone. I think yeah. I think something, you know, that was definitely really hard was his penis. I <laughs> got into always. Robert, I don't fuck around. <laughs> I will not date a soft man. <laughs> Sorry, go on. I was, I was, no, okay, this is a side note, but I was with some guy who was like, honestly, you know, I, I usually can't, uh, I usually can't come until after like 35 or like 45 minutes of like vigorous activity. And I was like, what? So specific. <laughs> um, or, you know, or more. Like he just like was not sensitive in that area. Mm. And I was just like, I don't know if that would work for me because like I just I can finish way quicker yeah. or like I'm just like way more sensitive. So, yeah, like, I don't know. He could still like he could still get aroused and stuff. But I was just like, this is a worker anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, advice I would give to myself something that was very difficult was getting into my first serious relationship without ever going to therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, just like unloading or acting out quite a lot of serious, like emotional shit on that first guy. Um, and then in my second relationship, um, starting therapy pretty much at the same time as I started, uh, getting into the relationship with that guy. And like, it's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Like just start therapy whenever you want. It's like, doesn't really matter in that sense, but like to just know a bit more about myself before getting intimate with someone so that, like I was saying before, so I'm not discovering or so I'm not having this other person play guessing games as to like who I really am. Mm -hmm. um, because then what also happens is like uh, I might be going through like some sort of fundamental changes or like learning things about myself. So the person that, um, you know, they thought I was a couple months ago or like a year ago is actually like quite different from where I'm at now. And that has a lot to do with dating like in one's twenties. I think we grow yeah. a lot through our twenties, yeah. but like, yeah, that would, that would probably be the main thing of just like, just like take, take my time, you know, try to have more fun. It doesn't have to be super serious. Yeah. 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 Well, that makes, that makes complete sense. Oh, that's nice. Um, I think like, it seems like the theme here is yeah, exploration, right. And, and trying things out and, being more open to who you are and willing to challenge and question who you are. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I, and I found through my relationships too, there are moments where your gut is telling you something that we might over logic 
And we just have to like be willing to like challenge what your gut is bringing up, you know, bring it up, discuss it um, and see what, how, you know, how the other person feels about it or how they react to it. Just kind of like test those grounds and see where it goes, because sometimes we'll just be like, oh, no, it means nothing. And, and I'm just going to like, you know, brush it under the rug or like it's like it's not really what who they are, or what they're about. Um, and sometimes your gut is more in tune than your brain. Ooh, yeah, it's true. Well, Robert, shall we play a game? Let's play a game. Are we at that part of the show? (laughs) (laughs) Good game, good game. (laughs) Oh, Michael, your grand adventure. (laughs) I I hope that was uh, coherent on your end. I was scrambling the entire time. That's why we do it, Michael. That's why we (laughs) do it. Oh my gosh, I was so in character. (laughs) <laughs> all right well done loved it <sighs> well we're coming up on 45 mm-hmm. um i'm feeling good I, mm-hmm. I think that that's right around what i was aiming for for uh this episode so did you have any uh thing you wanted to add before we close well let's see i think one of the things if i were to reflect upon what we just talked about <laughs> Is that how can we tie that game into <laughs> romantic just... types? <laughs> we can't, David. We just can't. Uh, well, um, here, here's there the thing. Were, there were primate carnal relations. That's true. When which... really, you know, we're just primates looking for carnal, carnal relations. relations. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> there was a theme of adventure and journey, which I think is what we talked about when it came to types, right? It's very much informed by that exploration <laughs> of self. Much like Michael did. I love that. Right? I can, oh, I can bullshit some connections, let me tell you. <laughs> I was a teacher for a year and a half. Um, the, yeah, I, but it's true though. Like the, that journey, I think, is a huge thing of, you know, like there's things we look back upon, things we look forward to, and so much of it is in, ex, informed by those previous experiences and what we learned about ourselves. And I, I think we both want somebody who is willing to do that exploration and to open up and to challenge what they are because i find that more interesting and those journeys don't always necessarily lead to you being in the same place like we both experience a relationship where it ultimately that journey took us apart which can happen that's okay it is okay it is okay because growing apart means that you're also growing toward something even bigger Ooh, when one door closes a trap door opens and you fall through <laughs> in a great pit of despair and then eventually you come out of it and you pull the open. lever <laughs> wrong <laughs> lever <laughs> <laughs> yep. i actually remember that tiktok that was shortly lived oh awesome mm-hmm. um so what's uh no i'm not uh, uh anyway Thank you all so much for listening. (laughs) I'm just skipping part of the notes. Um, Next up, Robert and I are going to do some commentary on Eating Out 2, which uh, should be coming up in maybe a couple weeks. And uh, I'm studying, so the channel bit button is like taking a small, quiet time, but it'll definitely be back around the summer. So, yeah. If you want to... Thank you. Thank you for testing out this format with me, Robert. Of course. (laughs) Glad to do that. Um, if you want to follow, you can uh, on. Oh God, this is so this is so clunky. Uh-oh. If you want to follow Bitbutton on social media, you can follow at Bitbutton on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, my personal one is at David Borja on Instagram, and Robert is at Robert F Mackay on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for listening to Tissues of the Day. Stay wet, Internet. Soaking. Gross. That's our catchphrase. That's our catchphrase. If you like it, um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and share. And remember, as always, welcome to my YouTube channel. Yeah, fuck the rest of the content. Just like based off our tagline. <laughs> uh, awesome. Take care, everybody. Bye.